Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video and a couple of really crazy things are happening in crypto right now. One of them being this right here. There's an allegation going around or a rumor that KuCoin is now insolvent. It's going pretty trendy over on Twitter, leaving the CEO to respond by explaining why they are not. Right. But again, I'm saying pretty viral because it got a couple thousand likes. Otter said KuCoin Insider confirms KuCoin is insolvent. X employee whistleblows that estimated hole up to 500 million bucks. KuCoin may not have the coins to meet depositors redemptions. 92 percent certain and retweet and like this tweet and read on. And he then goes to kind of give himself some authority for calling out some other things in the past. And that's where things get kind of scary, because in the way in which he describes things, he's been pretty accurate calling out a lot of these BS things. And what I mean with BS things is, for example, how Luna was actually set to collapse from the get go or this or that. He's citing an insider without any source. But as it currently stands, well, it's an allegation, right? It's pretty hard to say, oh, this is right or oh, this is wrong, because, well, you don't have any other thing to base this on except for his word. Now, Johnny KuCoin came in and said has been clarified already, but basically makes no sense because KuCoin was not exposed to Luna whatsoever. And recent fundraising has nothing to do with the market downtrend. But again, right, it's it's one word against the other. I personally like to follow Fat Man with whatever he says. And he says the entire premise of your threat is incorrect. KuCoin did support and actively accept W Luna deposits, although for trading and balance purposes, they were credited directly as Luna. Similar to USDT on Tron being combined with USDT on Ethereum, this is fear mongering. I personally think that this is not really too properly built up. And I think that it went trending now for the wrong reasons, but it's just something to consider, all right? It's just something to consider, something I had to get out to you guys. But uh, my personal thoughts is no, I think KuCoin is fine. I still have some money on there, even though I personally don't think it's very smart to keep all your money on. But what an interesting battle, huh? Uh, Fat Man says also his ex employee is a random anonymous guy who DM'd him on Twitter. I wouldn't consider that meaningful. And Fat Man is usually pretty accurate in calling things out and calling BS out. So I would personally say take the take the calm chair with this one. However, I should add, you can never be too certain, all right? He might be the right guy all along. I, I, I'm not gonna deny that. Maybe in a couple of months, we're gonna be like, oh, Otter was right all along and the other guys are just <laughs> calling him stupid like me, I guess. But as of this point, his allegations are unfounded, even though you never know what company is un, you know, unsolvent in the background of things. You know, that, that's, that's, I guess, true. Talking about exchanges that are not insolvent, FTX, Sam Beckman Freed led FTX in talks to purchase South Korea's Bitthumb. Fun fact, a lot of crypto craze happened surrounding Bitthumb because, well, a lot of the premium from, from South Korea influences the crypto prices we have here in, I guess, the other sides of the world. And so if FTX were to buy Bitthumb, I think it's rather interesting to see how that premium is going to act then because I'm not sure if they're going to leave them as separate entities. I, I, I do suppose so, because otherwise there'd be a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, arbitrage opportunities that would kind of come in then. Because in South Korean exchanges, you need to have your South Korean number to be able to uh, trade on there. On American exchanges, you kind of don't need that whatsoever. But if you were allowed to trade on both, there'd be some very easy arbitrage opportunities. It doesn't matter too much, though, guys. Let's uh, let's take a look at this. 888,000 Bitcoin addresses now hold at least one Bitcoin. All I want you to know about this is, well, if you ever thought Bitcoin holders are giving up, no. I think a lot of people are just struggling to get themselves to one Bitcoin. I think if you ever get to one Bitcoin, you've received the ultimate honor of being the new 1% of the 1% of the 1% sort of, right? It's like the highest honor that can be bestowed upon you. And it's just drastically increasing. Even though we covered before that a lot of people are at a loss right now, specifically the newest buyers, the majority of people are not. And they're still stacking up with an average price of $8,000 per Bitcoin. And I think if you look at the scheme over, you know, let's say a 20 year period or a 15 year period, or maybe even a five by five by five year period, whatever, that it really is going to shock you, I think, how much the price, average price per Bitcoin is going to increase. 2009 to 2020, $8,000 average per Bitcoin. 2021 to 22, already 43,000. If we extrapolate, put 2021 to 2036, I think the average price per Bitcoin is gonna be over $80,000 if we take it that far. 
All right, but um, there's also one video I want to make about VeChain, and I'm not sure if I should make a separate video about it or just talk about it briefly in one of these. And that's honestly because of how crazy VeChain is with the partnership and how crazy I've actually gone ahead and bought VeChain. So it's one of those coins which is definitely not that good to buy in a bear market, but is very solid over prolonged periods of time. Um, what, I, what I mean with that is that VeChain has fundamentals that are backing it up properly for forever. And even though it's a coin that many people neglect when things are doing bad, it's quite logical because there's also a lot of hype surrounding it and there's a lot of concept and future in VeChain. So same thing for ADA basically, right? It's not, of the, not, not a token what does the best in a bear run like Bitcoin does because there's more of an idea of what they're going to bring to the table as time progresses. VeChain has that really strongly. Even though we already know they have some crazy partnerships, a lot of this stuff is being not so much used until some point in the near future. For example, the supply chain issue which they're fixing, yeah, it's huge, but how far are they? Working with all these different countries and getting that stuff going, it takes a lot of time. And the same thing goes for ADA. They have such huge plans, they're gonna get so crazy, but it will take time. And that's why I'm pretty happy with the UFC VeChain partnership, which they got for pretty recently, or went for pretty recently, because I honestly think that that's gonna put them on the map for shorter term, you know, um, bearish resilience, basically. That in a bear run, they still have the VeChain partnership, uh, still have the UFC partnership. They still have this hype always surrounding them. They still have this uh, notion of being talked about, even though you know the bigger progress is kept for the bull markets. There's the FOMC meeting coming out shortly. Usually these are not so good. <laughs> At least the last couple of months, they've not been so good. A lot of fear surrounding those, but CZ is bullish on the crypto market ahead of this FOMC meeting, which I think is rather interesting. Everybody's talking about some rate hikes, right? Meanwhile, CME Fed Watch tool indicates the probability of a 100 base points rate, which is 1% uh, rate hike, has fallen below 20%, though, the probability of that. It means the Fed would likely go for a 0.75% or 75 base points rate hike in the next FOMC meeting on July 27th. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell on July 22nd confirmed that interest rate hikes are likely to slow after the 75 base point rate hike next week. And all I can say about it is we shall see because as they go for crazy actions over in the US with more and more stimulus, we might actually not really combat the inflation as much as they expect to. But again, as I said before, we shall see. Ethereum address is also increasing all the, the small fries and all of this. It's just kind of nice to see. Actually, I, I'm kind of wondering as well, in the last couple of months, let's say the last six months or so, have you accumulated more or have you actually sold more crypto in the last six months? Let me know down below. And also, if you're enjoying these daily crypto videos, make sure that you press the like button down below. It always helps out a ton. And also, if you're looking for a platform to trade on, make sure you check out Bybit. A link is down below. There's some crazy bonuses on there, so I highly recommend you guys to go ahead and check it out. All right, a lot of, a lot of crypto news today, a lot of miscellaneous stuff. In the Ripple v. SEC lawsuit, partially the SEC was granted. In connection with the SEC's objection to Judge Nedburn's ruling on the Hinman speech documents, SEC's motion to file a 30-page opening brief was denied, limited to 20 pages, but its request to file a 10-page reply brief was granted. All this is surrounding is while the SEC doesn't want those Hinman documents to go around, and there's a big discussion about it, and the judge is kind of siding with the SEC for now, but as I said before, I think on most major um, issues, she will grant Ripple's side from now on because she saw the hypocrisy regarding these, these documents. But maybe the judge just wants to see a little bit more of what the SEC has to offer with their explanation because before they contradict themselves so much. Then, Mexico-based Utah University to accept tuition payments in 34 different crypto, including Shiba Inu. Can't say too much about it except for nice. If you're a Shiba Inu holder, this is surely nice. It's surely good to hear. Mexico-based Utah University students in more than 11 countries, including the US, Mexico, Chile, and whatever, can now pay the U tuition fees with 34 different crypto, including Shiba Inu. And that's again the progress of crypto, right? It's increasing. The fact that you can use it for university tuition is already crazy. If you told me this a couple years ago, I'd look at you, I'd look you in the face and just scream <laughs> or laugh or I don't know. Crazy. Uh, Dogecoin warns against knockoffs, says our rivals come and go, and Doge is the next financial revolution evolution, sorry. Yeah, there have been many tokens over the past nine years that have quickly come and gone. One Dogecoin is one Dogecoin, and there's only one Dogecoin, which is its own blockchain and not directly associated with any tokens. Beware of imposters. It's actually really interesting if I started thinking about it. I used to be a major Dogecoin holder until Cryptopia got hacked, but I guess after all the 2017-18 bull run, 
did change quite a lot for crypto in terms of meme coins. Before that, Dogecoin really was the leader and it was not appreciated as much. But right now, Dogecoin and Shiba Inu are this high up into the rankings that it basically said on the map that, that memes are, are worth a lot, I guess. You know, that, that's kind of what, <laughs> what I guess it put out there. It's, it's kind of crazy if you start to think about it. If you really think about it, meme coins are actually a really funny concept, huh? That they got this worthy and that people were thinking that it's going to get this far. And the fact that you can use a meme coin for your university tuition is it's the most funny conscious in the world. But I guess that's the power of crypto. It's the power of the people's money. Whatever people want in terms of payments can be done. It's really crazy if you start to think about it. But I guess that's also what gets me excited about crypto. Getting your power back in the financial system. Again, that's why I'm excited about XRP, XDC, QMT, all these financial revolution cryptos in essence, right? But I'm bullish about a lot of different crypto for a lot of different purposes. I'm just a crypto bull, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, but that was it for today's little quick crypto update. There's a lot of stuff that happened and I just wanted to quickly share all this news with you guys right now. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe to the channel. Adios amigos. See you guys later.